Hello and welcome to KnowledgeBank.pro. In today's tutorial, we will talk about how to count things that did not happen. As usual, all of the materials I will post on my blog and the link will be available in the description. So you can download this file and take a look at how everything is put together and how the calculation works. So what's a use case? It's actually real interesting. Normally, uh, we're counting and uh, trying to analyze things that happened. So in this case, we have visuals that are trending how much did we sell over time? How much did we sell by customer? How much did we sell of every individual product? So the table looks very simple. We have a column for date, column for product ID, customer ID, and the sales amount. Very, very simple. Now, the question we're gonna try to answer in this tutorial is a little bit different. Yes, we know how to answer what did we sell or what happened? Who did we sell to? Again, what happened? What if we wanna know which customers did not buy certain products? What didn't we sell? What didn't occur? We expected to sell a certain products, but we didn't sell it. Which products did we not sell? So that's what we're gonna be answering in this tutorial. Turns out you could do it in two very simple steps. Step number one, we need to create our sales measure. So I've created here a sales dollar measure. All it does, it just returns a sum of the sales amount in the sales table. Very simple. And here is our calculation to return a count of products with no sales. Let's see how this works. We already know, and we know how to calculate what has sold. That's the sales plus sales dollar measure. So our approach is the following. We're gonna create a table that has all of the products to that table. It'll, so to begin with, that table will only have one column, which is values of all of the products that we have. The next step is we will add a column to that table that has title of sales amount or a column name. And then in the values for that column, we will do a zero plus sales dollars. The reason we're gonna do a zero because if product did not sell, that measure will return a blank. And normally that's not what we want. We wanna make sure that we have a zero in there because we will use that zero further in a calculation. Now, by the time the add columns function worked, and the way add column function works is it takes an initial table, in our case, just one column of product IDs, and then it allows you to add additional columns to it. So we added our sales amount column with the value of zero plus number of sales. So now when this is done, we, we have a, a table of all products that we have, and then that table also has another column with all of the sales. The next step is we wanna filter that table only for rows where sa sales are zero. And that's what we use the filter function for. So the filter function will take a look at our temporary table. It'll only leave the rows in it that have zero sales or effectively no sales, that's what we want. And because we wanna count how many of those there are, we're just gonna use a count rows function. And count rows functions will tell us how many rows are in that table with products with no sales. Please know that I'm using values function here, uh, which will allow me potentially to uh, filter it down by certain product characteristics in the future. If you always wanna see all products in this calculation, you may wanna put an all in front of it to make sure that you're filtering out all possible filters that might be applied to your product dimension. But for the purposes of this example, this is what I want. Hopefully this makes sense. Again, start with the row of all, start with the table of all of the products add another column with sales for those products and filter out those products that do have sales and then count how many rows we have. So this is exactly what we want. This function, this measure will return the number of products with no sales. Let's see how it actually works. So the first thing that I did, I just created a card visual and I dragged our measure in this visual. And you can see that right now in this measure, in this visual, there is blank value. That means that Unless so because this says blank, that means that in the given period and for all customers, all products have been sold. Now let's click on, for example, September. And we see that in September, there was one product that did not get sold. If I say September and control clicked on customer one, that tells me that there is four products that did not get sold. Now the question is, well, what are those products? So the way I solved that problem, I created a table visual and in the table visual, I just listed all of the product names. So it's a very simple visual where the products just go into the values. And I added a filter. 
And in the filter, I dragged my measure and I said that that, that that measure has to be greater than zero. So if the product didn't get sold, it'll have a number one. So there's at least one product with that name that did not get sold. So by us filtering things that greater than zero in this table, we will only see the products that did not get sold. So now let's see how that works again. We're gonna click on customer one. Customer one over time has bought all the products. But if we click on, for example, July, so control click to keep both selections. So customer one, July, six products were not sold to this customer in July. And this is the list of those products, three, five, seven, eight, nine, and 10. So that's about it for today. Quick and easy video. You can download this Power BI, Power BI desktop file on my blog. Look for the link in the description. Hope you found this informative and interesting. And please come back again soon for more. Thank you. Bye.